In this clip, I will talk you step by step through this Christmas card design of a robin with a bokeh background. I will take you step by step through all the processes and techniques that I used, and I will also share with you the resources that I used to make this painting. So we're going to start by talking about equipment. The first thing to mention is the watercolours that I'm using. This is a Windsor & Newton Copman half pan set. It has 45 different colours. It is classed as student quality. However, I have known of many artists that use this, especially if it's work that they're not selling. And I have found this to be a really good quality set. I've been using it for well over a year. The next thing I'm going to talk about is nail brushes. I use these for fine details. I'm also using the silver black velvet brushes because they hold a lot of water. They're really good for watercolours. I will also be using washi tape for the edges and I will also be using Florence watercolour paper. I found this a really good budget brand and it's also good because it's pre-cut into A5. Finally, I will be using a stencil that has round circles cut out of it because this will help me create the bokeh effect. So I have included here the palette of paints that I have used for the entire painting. I'm starting by using the wet on wet technique and I've started by applying some clean water to the background and then I will apply the colours. I'm using Payne's Grey on the edges and then in the middle I'm using Indian Red and also I will be using sepia in the centre. So I'm starting by going around the edge of the bird with a really small detail brush, one of the silver black velvet brushes and then I will go around the rest of the image with the larger brush because I want to give a smooth effect and let the paint absorb into the water. Thank you. 
So once your painting has dried, you can start to create the bokeh effect. For reference, I put this image in between some books inside a larger book and then placed heavy books on top to ensure that it was flat before I went to the next stage. So what I'm doing here is I've got my circular stencil that I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about the equipment and I'm getting a variety of items depending on the size of the holes. So if it's a small hole I'm getting a cotton bud here and using that to make the marks um, and take the paint off with a little bit of water and for the larger ones and if I want to apply more pressure I'm using a bristle brush if I want to create a more delicate effect I'm using one of the softer brushes the look I'm going for here is I want to get a variety of values or tones because I want to create an, a depth within the image. So I don't want to have all the same shades. So it's really important if that's the kind of effect you're going for. Maybe use a variety of brushes, experiment maybe first before you start creating your bokeh effect. Before I did this sort of final outcome, I did experiment with this a few times before I got it right. So you might want to do that before you go on to working on a final piece. You can see here that some of these are slightly darker than others and that's the effect I'm going for. So now I need to add texture and detail to the tree stump. So I've started by adding a really watery mix of the Payne's Grey to the snow area because this will give some tonal values to the snow. And then I will start to layer up all of the paints onto the tree stump. So I will start by adding some burnt sienna and then I will go in with some sap green to pick out the tones of the algae on the tree stump.
even painting the robin knees planning and obviously I've sketched it out but now that I'm looking at the red breast area I've seen that there are quite a few tonal values so I'm going to just sketch in the darker and the lighter areas before I go in and start adding the paint and I will be using cadmium orange hue with a mixture of sepia in some areas for the darker tones because there is quite a variety of different tones within this area. For the top of the head and the areas at the back where the feathers are, I have used mainly watered down Payne's grey and sepia. For the underbelly area, I have used a mixture of yellow ochre and raw sienna. As I need to add detail to the bark and add texture I'm going to add this on with watercolour pencil because I want to have a texture or a media that fits in with the watercolour technique but I need to add detail.
again the beak and the eye are really detailed and quite defined so because of that I've chosen to use watercolour pencil so that I can ensure that I get those really tiny details. to show snowflakes in the foreground. If you got value from today's content, then please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for more content. If you would like to see more Christmas content, then hit the playlist above. If you would like to improve your watercolour skills further, then hit the playlist below. If you'd like to find out more about the products that I've used in today's clip, then don't forget to look in the description below.